Hey, Ralph here. Uh, welcome to the Moodle Tip of the Week. Uh, today we're going to look at basically two of my favorite tools. Uh, we're going to look at uh, Quizlet and we're going to look at how we take a set that we've developed in Quizlet and import that into Moodle in the form of a quiz. Uh, I've written some uh, tools that allow for this to happen fairly easily, so why don't we go ahead and get started here. All right, so first off, this is Quizlet. Uh, Quizlet is a tool for generating sets. I think that uh, for the most part, what I really use Quizlet for is to help my students uh, develop uh, vocabulary. Um, again, when you teach a foundation type level class, uh, being able to speak the language of Cisco or networking or other technologies is very important. So the Quizlet in itself is a great tool for um, allowing students to uh, develop a, a strong uh, vocabulary. So, first of all, let me show you, um, you know, what a set looks like. So this is just a set I copied uh, for use in this demo here. But you'll see it's basically a set of terms and definitions. Now, <clears throat> when you're creating a set, or if you're creating a set to export into a quiz in Moodle using my tools, uh, a couple things that you might want to uh, keep in mind. One of those things would be that you know, the subject matter should be fairly consistent. Uh, what it's going to do is it's going to take the terms or the definitions or both, and it's going to create, you know, random multiple choice questions. And so the wrong answers are going to be selected from the terms in the set or the definitions in the set, depending on how you uh, set that up. So that's one thing that you're going to want to keep in mind when you're, when you're writing these sets. Uh, the more similar the subject matter, the more realistic the uh, quizzing opportunities are. Uh, a couple other things here related to that. What my we're going to end up exporting this file into a tab eliminated format. And one of the things that my script does is it cleans out any lines uh, that have tabs in them. So when you're developing a set, you want to make sure that you avoid having hard returns. Uh, and occasionally people will do that. For example, here if I come in and I add a term, so I'll go ahead and click on the little add add remove term button here and then I come down here and I say add a card and so if I say you know list and then I come over here and I say term enter term B we don't want to do that we want to avoid creating those hard returns because what will happen is is those lines any line after your initial hard return will be stripped out by my script when it cleans the input before it actually generates its work. So avoid having those uh, hard returns there. And in fact, I'm just gonna go ahead and uh, let's do this. I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of that particular item that I just created. So I'll say done. I'm gonna come back here and we want to delete this. So we're gonna remove. Come back down here to the bottom. And trash it. They changed the UI a little bit on me there. <laughs> All right, now another thing that um, you might have noticed here is that I've got a couple terms right here at the end that have this, you know, wrong. Okay. If you want to create distractors uh, using my tool, then what you'll want to do is you'll enter in either wrong in all caps in the term or the definition. What that what will happen then is that that term here, for example, this false one would be included as one of the random wrong answers, or in this case, the false definition, but it's not going to generate a question off of uh, that wrong string. So you can put wrong in either the term or the definition, and then you can uh, supplement your your set with distractors. Uh, I typically don't use a lot of distractors. Uh, the reason for it is I'm much more concerned with knowledge transfer than assessment and I find having distractors in there that kind of puts that term or puts that definition uh, in the student's mind and it doesn't really <laughs> mean anything and so it can be uh, on a, from an assessment standpoint distractors are certainly very useful but from a knowledge transfer standpoint which is where I spend most of my time with my students uh, I don't find that distractors are useful in most cases. 
there are certainly some places where I do use distractors, but you can feel free to add as many distractors as you want. And what you're going to want to do is just make sure you put wrong in the term or wrong in the definition in all caps in order to do that. So avoid hard returns. Uh, include distractors if you want. Keep the subject matter fairly similar. That'll give you the best results uh, when you're doing this. Now, this is an existing set. If you were to create your own set in Quizlet, let me just go back there for a second. So I'll go back to the main page. All you have to do is you have to just click on uh, the create button here. Uh, when you click on the create button, obviously you'll have to set up a user account, you give it a name. Um, now this is a case where I've actually added some because this is a lingering project, but <clears throat> you just add in the term, make sure you pick the appropriate language uh, for your terms and definitions, and then just add term, definition, term, definition, term, definition. All right, so let's go back to the set I was working with here. So we've got the Moodle demo here. Now, how do we get this from Moodle, or excuse me, from Quizlet over to Moodle? Now, what we're going to want to do here is we're going to want to click on the More button, and we're going to select Export. Now, the default export is into a tabbed eliminated file. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and, or, so I'm going to copy my text, and I'll just select all and I'll copy. I'm going to bring up my text editor of choice. So let's go ahead and bring up Notepad. I don't know if it's my text editor of choice, but it's the text editor I have here on my Windows system. And then I'll go ahead and paste that in. Now I want to save that. So I'll save that as let's see it's in my demo folder and I'll just call this demo 4 sure that'll work all right so we have our exported Quizlet data in this very raw format now the tool that I've created here uh, will allow you to upload that file and then decide you know if you want to create multiple choice matching true false questions whatever you uh, need or a combination of all of the above. Uh, so the URL here is prep.nhls.com. Uh, this tool is not necessarily the simplest to use. I'm going to put the URL and the, um, the login information in the uh, description here, but you just log in with Moodle and uh, with a password of Moodle here. All right. So I have to upload my file. And there's instructions here on the tool, but on the left side of your keyboard, we're going to press Control alt shift And then we have to click on this Browse button here, this File Browse. And we need to browse out to the home directory of the Moodle user. And then we select to upload our file. So in my case, I'm going to be uploading the Demo 4 file. And then again, I'm going to press Control alt shift here on the left side of my keyboard to close the menu I'll type in demo4.txt if it finds the file the first thing it's going to do is it's going to clean the file and cleaning the file just takes care of any of the special characters in the format see what Moodle wants is Moodle supports a variety of different question formats but the one that we're going to convert our file to is the what's called the GIF format and so there are some special characters there that need to be escaped and so there's a cleaning script that removes any lines without tabs and handles all of your special characters so you'll see here at the top uh, we have my file name and if I view my import file you know that's just that tabbed eliminated file right there and by default if you're doing a full set it only generates 20 percent of the true false questions it'll take 20% of the terms randomly create one true question and one true false question for each. I've actually um, started using true false a lot more uh, lately. I think that it's a real good way of testing whether a student has a general understanding. If they see a term and then a random description and they say true, then we know that they're not tracking real well with the uh, what we're doing in the lecture. So I have been bumping up my true false numbers. Now we can do that by you know changing the full set percent of true false. So I select option 11, and I'm going to go ahead and say 50% on my true false. Also, I've been using more wrong answers in the multiple choice. The default here is 3. I've been bumping that up to 4. 
that's actually option 12 here. So I'll select option four. All right, so now I have four wrong answers for all my true false. I've got 50%. And you can do a variety of things here. You'll see we, I can create just multiple choice questions. I can create matching questions. Short answer is fill in the blank. You know, that's only applicable in certain situations, but you do have the capacity to be able to do that. Or option seven, create a full set without the short answer, which is what uh, I'm going to do here. So I'm gonna select option seven. And then I'm gonna view my output file. Okay, so this is the output file that was created. And so you'll see here that it's converted this to this GIF format that Moodle likes. And if we kind of look around, you'll see here, like here's an example question. You know, Windows App Store installation, the correct answer, Windows 8 or higher, can be sideloaded. But then you'll see my distractor snuck in. So one of the wrong answers is one of my distractors. And so when you add in those distractors, they will randomly be added as potential answers. So these are the multiple choice. I'm scrolling through. It's going to do multiple choice based off of um, the definition and the term, as well as the true false questions, as well as the matching based questions. And so you end up, you know, you can have a Quizlet set of 15 terms and this thing will end up spitting out like 45 uh, potential questions for you. And I do like to have large question pools. Uh, because my students retake quizzes constantly and so I always I use random uh, I draw randomly from the pools all right go ahead and press Q to exit there now I'm gonna download my file okay. so again I gotta bring up my menu here now it'll give you instructions if you press quit if I say 13 on quit here it'll say press control alt shift that'll bring up the menu and then the final file the one that we're looking for is the the one that has that dot final extension. Uh, and so I'm going to go ahead and just double click on that. And then down here in the bottom right, I'm going to go ahead and download that file, demo4.final. All right. Now also, when you quit, it'll ask you if you want to start over or press Q to exit. After I press Q saying that this is the last quiz that I want to do, it'll ask me to delete all of those files that it created. So I go ahead and say yes to each of these questions to remove those files. And then at the end, you can add a little comment about the, uh, the site. Now that will disconnect you, but it will want to reconnect. So I'm just gonna go ahead and uh, shut that. And let's talk a little bit about taking that, that GIF format file that Moodle likes now and putting it into a course. So this is my Moodle Cloud account. And if I access the demo course here, so you'll notice here that we have the question bank and we have questions and then we have categories. First thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna look at my categories. I do highly recommend that you keep your questions organized. <laughs> <laughs> That's very, very important. And so before I actually start importing questions, I'm going to build out my categories. And let's just say that this was uh, for uh, module four, lesson one. So I'll make a category called module four. Decide where you want to put it. I'm going to put it off of the top for the course. I'll add the category. And then inside module four i'm going to create another category here so add a category under module four and i'm going to call this lesson one now notice if you just use modules and lessons um, then it can get a little bit tricky because you'll get a bunch of categories called like lesson one so i'm going to call this lesson uh four dash one Okay, so that I know that I keep the module in the title uh, because again, I've run in that situation where I've got six different categories all named lesson one and it's kind of tricky when you're looking at it from other views to know which one it is. So not a bad idea to keep the module title in there as well. All right, so now I've got my hierarchy built. Now we've got to import our questions that we just created. So what we want to do here is we want to select import so over here, again, the course administration on the question bank, select import. Our file format here is the gift format. 
And this is where it's a little tricky. They don't expose the general tab here or the general category is collapsed by default. And this is where we actually select the module. So it's really easy to import them into the wrong place. So you have to expand general here and then the import category, select the category you just created. Okay. And then the last thing you have to do is just drag your file. So if I go to my downloads folder here, and let me refresh that view, there's the demo for final. Drop it in, and then I go ahead and select import. And what you'll see is it'll take me to a screen to show me all of the files that in fact I have just uh, imported. So there's my 77 questions. Now you might want to do some additional cleanup here. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and select continue. Uh, at this point I could go in and start editing these questions. Like here for example is the uh, a multiple choice question, a method to deploy custom Windows apps. You know I could click on the edit or I could click the preview option here. And I might say, well, I'm not happy with those answers. Well, they're a little, you know, they're not hard enough or two terms are too similar. So you could come in here and like, you know, inspect your, uh, your final product here and then say, you know what, I think I want to, you know, make some changes to, you know, that question. And so from there, you would just, um, you know, click on the edit button and then you could go in and just edit the question. So there may be some post-production, if you will, uh, cleanup work that you want to do uh, with, uh, with the questions. It's very easy to, uh, to go about doing that. Uh, but you really have now you can take you know, a set of you know, 30 terms and definitions that you've created inside Quizlet. And you have your students using Quizlet you know, through like the flashcards tool or the testing tool to work on that definition. And then you can use this process to, you know, if you've got 30 questions, it's going to, you know, spit out 80 potential quiz questions for you between the multiple choice for terms, the true false, the multiple choice for definitions, uh, and the, you know, and the matching. So definitely uh, represents a, uh, a good way to integrate uh, the Quizlet tool, which is a great tool, and the Moodle tool, which again is another great tool and bring that work that you've done already in Quizlet, bring it into Moodle in a fairly quick uh, and efficient way. You know, from here, now I have this large question pool. Uh, again, that generated 77 questions. You know, when we look at the, you know, the actual Quizlet itself that I started with, you know, it was 26 terms. So 26 terms gets pushed out to 77 questions, uh, which is a, uh, is a nice thing. It's always nice to have large uh, question pools for your students. So anyway, I hope that helps. I uh, hope I didn't go too quickly through the process. Uh, again, I'll include the, uh, the URL out to the, uh, the tool so that you can log in and you can upload uh, your Quizlet sets and then you can generate your own quizzes and then you can download them. Uh, but I really find that this is a, uh, a great way to uh, leverage the work that you've already done in Quizlet and bring that work into Moodle. Hope that Hope that helps, gives you some uh, ideas. Uh, again, I'm a huge advocate of uh, both uh, Quizlet uh, and uh, Moodle. And if you liked the video, go ahead and throw me a like. If you wanna see more videos, uh, go ahead and subscribe. I'm planning on getting a little more active on this particular uh, channel. So have a great day.